Hello, everyone. My name is Pedro Zamora, and I am a software development engineer at AWS. In this demo, I'll walk you through how you can get started with Amazon Data Zone using Redshift. Let's see all the things we'll cover. First, we will introduce a sample end to end customer workflow that covers the core functionalities of Amazon Data Zone. We'll start with a higher level overview and then take you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can implement this workflow in DataZone yourself. So, let's get started. Amazon DataZone is an AWS service that allows you to catalog, discover, share, govern, and analyze data across organizational boundaries. If you're not already familiar with DataZone, please visit our first Getting Started video for more context. It will be linked in the video description. Let's explore the sample workflow we will implement using DataZone. In this scenario, the marketing team is looking to access and analyze sales data. The sales team will make this data available for marketing using an existing table named Catalog Sales in the Redshift Serverless Workgroup. To keep things simple, we will limit this implementation to a single AWS account, a single region, and a single IAM user, who will act as both the data producer and the data consumer. We'll also limit our demo to a single data asset. These are the different steps we will go through. We will first step into the shoes of a data zone administrator to enable and configure the data warehouse blueprint in our domain. This will allow us to connect to the Redshift serverless workgroup and access our data. We will also create the environment profiles that can be used by the sales and marketing teams to create environments in their projects. Then we will look at the publishing flow where as the sales team, we will create an environment and publish our sales data to the data zone catalog. Last, we will look at the subscription flow, where as a marketing team, we will create an environment, subscribe to the data published by the sales team, and query it in the Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2. So let's build this use case on DataZone. We'll assume you already have a DataZone domain, some projects for publishing and subscription, and a table in Amazon Redshift that you can publish to DataZone. Now, as a DataZone administrator, we'll first need to enable the Data Warehouse Blueprint. DataZone blueprints define what AWS tools and services are provisioned to be used within a DataZone environment. Enabling the Data Warehouse Blueprint will allow data consumers and data producers to use Amazon Redshift and the Redshift Query Editor for their sharing, accessing, and consuming of data. Let's take a second to configure the Data Warehouse Blueprint. We have a few features that might be useful to a DataZone administrator. First, we have managing projects. This is a list of projects that are allowed to create environment profiles using the Data Warehouse Blueprint. By default, this is set to all projects. You can use this list to grant only specific projects access if it fits your business needs. For our use case, let's set this to the admin project. To do this, we'll click Edit, restrict to only managing projects, and select the admin project. Then we'll save our changes. Next, we have parameter sets. A parameter set includes details such as a Redshift cluster or serverless workgroup name, database name, and the credentials that allow DataZone to connect to your cluster or workgroup. Once created, it can be used by the managing projects you set earlier. In our case, we want to create a parameter set to connect to the Redshift serverless workgroup containing the sales data. Let's run through how we can do this. First, you'll click Create Parameter Set. Enter a name, description, and select the region containing the resource you want to connect to. For us, our work group is in US East 1. Next, let's fill out the environment parameters. First, let's pick Amazon Redshift server list. Next, we'll have DataZone create an AWS secret on our behalf to connect to the work group. To do this, we'll need to give it a name and enter in the relevant credentials to access the work group. DataZone will create the AWS secret with the credentials you provided and tag it with the Amazon DataZone domain tag. You can also provide your own secret if you already have one set up. However, it must be tagged with the necessary DataZone domain tag as seen here. Then, we'll enter our Amazon serverless workgroup name and database. Click Create. Now, users in the DataZone portal can utilize this parameter set to connect to our Redshift serverless worker. Now that we've configured the Data Warehouse Blueprint, we can move into the DataZone portal by clicking this link.
Now that we're in the portal, let's go into the admin project and create some environment profiles for our sales and marketing teams to use. An environment profile is a predefined template that includes technical details required to create an environment, such as which AWS account, region, and the resources and tools to be added to this environment. Now, let's create an environment profile for the sales team to publish their data. Enter a name, description, and make sure the ONI project is set to admin. Next, we'll click the default data warehouse blueprint. You'll only see blueprints where the admin project is added as a managing project. Here, we can select the parameter set we just created in the console. Next, we can pick the authorized projects allowed to use this environment profile to create an environment. By default, this is set to all projects. We'll set this to the sales project. Lastly, we need to configure the environment profile's publishing permissions. Since the sales team is our data producer, we will allow it to publish from any schema. Let's create a second environment profile for the marketing team to consume data. Enter a name, description, and make sure the owning project is set to admin. Next, we'll click the default data warehouse blueprint. And again, we'll select the parameter set we just created in the console. This time, let's keep the authorized projects as the default all projects. Lastly, we need to configure the environment profile's publishing permissions. Since the marketing team is our data consumer, we will pick Don't Allow Publishing. Now, let's step into the shoes of the sales team, where we will publish some sales data to our data zone catalog. In the top left here, click the drop down and select the sales project. Now that we have an environment profile created for us, we need to work with data and analytics tools in this project. For this, we will create an environment. Click Create Environment. Let's enter a name, description, and select the profile that was created for the sales team. Here, we can review our parameters to make sure everything is correct. Once you're ready, you can click Create Environment. To publish the table in our Redshift Serverless Workgroup to the Data Zone Catalog, we need a data source with access to the schema containing our data. With a data warehouse environment, DataZone automatically creates a default schema and data source in the relevant Amazon Redshift cluster or workgroup. Any data you create in this default schema can automatically be published using the default data source. You can also create additional data sources if you want to bring data from a different schema like in our case. To do this, go to Data and click Create Data Source. Enter a name, description, and click Amazon Redshift. Then, pick the environment we created earlier. Since this environment can publish from any schema, you can use the same credentials provided during environment creation or provide new ones. We'll use the environment's credentials since you still are using the same Redshift serverless worker. We want to change the schema from the default schema to the one containing our data. The star here indicates that this data source will bring in all the tables it finds in this schema into Data Zone. Click Next. Data Zone can automatically publish these assets to the catalog, but let's keep this set to manual mode so we can curate the metadata before publishing. Let's also make sure to enable automated metadata generation. This means that any asset that the data source brings into Data Zone, Data Zone will automatically generate the business names of the table and columns for that asset. Now, let's run this data source. Once this data source has finished running, you will see that it brought in the catalog sales table. Now, this asset is added as inventory, which means only the members of the project can see them. To test, if we type catalog sales in the search bar, we won't find this asset. To make them discoverable, we will need to publish them. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Let's open the asset. We can see that DataZone brought in a bunch of technical metadata, such as the name of the table, its location, and the schema of the table, with all the columns and their data types. The recommended business names look correct to me, so we'll simply click Accept All. 
Now that we've added the business metadata, we can publish this table using the publish button, which makes it discoverable in the catalog. To test, let's type catalog sales in the search bar, and we can see that this asset is now showing up in the search results. Our data is now published and ready for consumption by other DataZone users. Now, let's switch into the shoes of the marketing team and see how we can subscribe to the data that the sales team just published. To do this, we'll need another environment. Same as before, we'll click Create Environment. Let's enter a name, description, and select the profile we created for the marketing team. Here, we can review our parameters to make sure everything is correct. Once you're ready, you can click Create Environment. Once the environment is created, let's open the catalog sales table in the catalog and click on subscribe. Pick the marketing project and provide a reason for access. This alerts the publisher of the data about a subscription request. Since we are acting as both subscriber and publisher here, we will see a notification. You can click on this notification, which will open the subscription request where we can see the details, including which project has requested access, who is the requester, and why they need access. To approve, we can click on the Approve button and provide a reason for approval. Now that the subscription has been approved, let's go back to the consumer project and see what's there. Under Subscribe Data, we can see that the catalog sales shows up as an approved asset. If we click here, we can see that DataZone is working on the necessary backend plumbing to automatically grant the access. Once that is done, we can see the subscription now shows as granted. Now that the marketing consumer project has access to the sales data, let's see how we can use the Amazon Redshift Query Editor V2 to analyze it. Let's go into the marketing consumer project and click on the Amazon Redshift link, which will take you to the editor within the context of the environment. Take a second to read these instructions for your first time setup. Now, let's open Amazon Redshift. Click on our serverless workgroup. Select Federated User and make sure the database is correctly set. Now we can create the connection and we should be able to freely access our database from now on. We can see that the catalog sales table is showing up here. To make sure that we have access to this table, we can preview it and we can see that the query executes successfully. So, in this demo, we saw how DataSound simplifies it for publishers to share the data and for consumers to find, access, and analyze that data. Thank you for watching.